Welcome back, Pet Health Junkies. We are continuing the conversation on uh, pet food ingredient labels because it is so important for you to know what you're reading when you turn that bag over. And we absolutely want you to turn that bag over. Even if you have a food you've been buying for a long time that works well with your pet, that you trust, that you love, keep reading those ingredient labels because they can change and we need to know about that. So we're going to go through quite a bit today in talking about the ingredient labels on pet foods. So who wants to start? As a pet parent, you face more challenges with your dogs and cats today than ever before in history. What's the best food to feed? How do I prevent illness and help them live longer? Maybe you currently have a pet living with disease or behavioral issues and you need a different approach for success. Welcome to the Pet Health Junkies podcast. We're so happy you're here. Pam Roussel is a holistic health practitioner specializing in holistic health for animals. Janet Cesarini is a healthy pet store owner and advocate for health through nutrition. Jessica Fisher is a pet parent coach and positive reinforcement dog trainer. Join us as we share our stories, experiences, and all that we've learned to change the way we think about raising our pets. We're breaking it all down and making it simple by sharing how we help pet parents just like you every day. Because when we know better, we can do better. (laughs) Dana, go for it. (laughs) Hi, everybody. Hi, Pet Health Junkies. Um, Thanks for being here. So I've gathered some things over time. And I have them, they're surrounding me right now. And, you know, I thought that I just would love to read some of the ingredients on some of the labels of very common, um, not just food, but even treats. And um, we're recording during February and it is Dental Health Month. So I even have some dental health products that I purchased with my own money (laughs) and just so that I could like have them here to show you and read ingredients because you know this is um in bone can you see that in bone adult dental rings and this one actually um came I didn't buy this one this one actually came to me um, as a, we'll call it a donation. And, Mm -hmm. you know, dental chews are very common, very prevalent on the market. And, you know, they are not cheap, my God. Um, and if you give your pet one a day, like they say to do, um, that's a lot of money. And I'm thinking there are a lot better ways where you could be spending that money. Um, so the first ingredient on this product, um, not unlike other very common dental products is rice flour um the so starch Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. the second one is gelatin and gelatin is there to help it stick together help the starch stick together um the third is vegetable glycerin that's going to help it stick together as well and do y'all have any if you have anything to add girls jump in the Mm -hmm. fourth is water And y'all are going to love the fifth ingredient. Any guesses? Drum roll. (laughs) Some sort of flavor. Well, that's number six. Okay. Probably some kind of um, a meat meal or something. Um, actually, meat meal would be way better than this. Oh, oh, Animal Digest. (laughs) Oh, that is so disgusting. You should talk about. (laughs) But animal digest. Oh, that is, that just makes me want to ugh, hurl, y'all. Okay, no powdered cellulose. Oh, of course, of course. Yeah, Yay. I was gonna say, y'all are barking up the wrong tree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, cellulose. Um, how many of you? This is gonna date me because I don't know if they still do this, but um, when I was in elementary school and when I was also a teacher many years ago, um, 
you know, when you'd have the um, classmate that would like hurl and mm-hmm. then they'd call in someone to help clean it and they'd throw that powder on the floor. Mm-hmm. All dust. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All dust. Guess what that was? Powdered cellulite. Oh yeah. So y'all not just picking on this product. Some of the most common foods that are veterinary and um, brands prescribed um, <laughs> and recommended have powdered cellulose in the bag. Um, it literally is sawdust or tree bark. There's no nutritional value. Mm-hmm. It is completely used as a filler, a cheap filler at that. So yeah. everyone's hard earned money in, in this product. Again, rice flour, gelatin, glycerin, water, powdered cellulose, natural chicken flavor, not chicken y'all. Yeah. Chicken flavor. So that's like, you know, love potion number nine. <laughs> <laughs> Chemical <laughs> Pour it into the bag. And then finally, we get to a, you know, a legitimate ingredient ingredient that's used, actually, that is known for um, helping tartar and plaque over time to be naturally you know, removed from the teeth. And that is the microalgae, mm. right? So um, I, I'll stop there because there are another... 10 ingredients which is insanity to me because you know we like limited ingredient products Mm -hmm. um and real ingredients but you know there's another brand like the plaque off which is an algae product um and algae if you didn't know it pet health junkies is a natural enzymatic cleaner for tartar and um, plaque on the teeth so Mm -hmm. and The other thing, just as a sidebar, is that, you know, the quickest way to get harder on the teeth is for us humans, eat a bag of potato chips. For you pets, eat a bag of kibble. That's what puts it there. There is not enough scraping action in the world that could be done by eating a bag of kibble to get the tartar off of the teeth. That is a myth, y'all. Well, and just to kind of throw more fuel on that fire. I just, um, interviewed and, and the podcast is already up, um, Dr. Katie Kangas, and we were talking about dental health and she was like, I don't, I don't care much about that tartar that's on the teeth. That tells me nothing. It tells me absolutely nothing. Um, it's purely cosmetic. What is going on under that gum line? That's the problem. Yes. That's where everything lies. Cause we were, we kind of got in the weeds about, and we were, we were talking to each other about how much we both just hate these non-anesthetic dentals yeah. <laughs> because for so many reasons, but it's, it's purely cosmetic and you may not like to see gunk on your dog's teeth and that's fine. We don't want that there, but it is cosmetic. It's what's going on under the gum line. That is the problem. And this, that kind of stuff is only adding to the problem good point and you know for that matter and talking about like microalgae and and then talking about the gum line putting usda organic coconut oil on the gum line is super healthy it's antibacterial it's anti-inflammatory so you know you don't have to go buy these chemical laden toothpaste Mm -hmm. um can i talk about this one can you see it (laughs) yes this is called Fresh Kitch- Kisses from Merrick. Isn't that a cute name? It is a cute <laughs> name. <laughs> yeah. So, so if you're not, so after I, I was a teacher and principal for, I don't know how many years, I went into corporate marketing. So this really just, I have a lot of fun when I look at bags, as do my um, partners here, Jessica and Pam, y'all love looking at the marketing. So this is super cute. Um, fresh kisses it cleans the teeth and freshens the breath and then they've got some you know pretty pictures on the front of I see some coconut some mint some rosemary um, and it does say that it's infused with coconut and botanical oils so let's turn it over to the back and the ingredients any guesses rice flour (laughs) yeah some sort of starch some kind of starch right Ding, ding 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 pea starch Yep. Mm. yep. Some kind of starch. You want to know what number two is? 
Wheat flour. Another starch. Another this starch. Tapioca. Oh, that was uh, going to be Yeah. <laughs> And then we have some vegetable glycerin and some gelatin. So it sound familiar. Yep. Uh, and then natural flavoring. I have no idea what natural flavoring is. Do y'all? It's just yeah. a chemical additive. <laughs> yeah. I have, I don't know what natural flavor is. I mean. Right. I don't know. Give me a piece of chicken. Give me a piece of beef. It'll I, taste like chicken. I know. I, you know what? And I talked to so many people at SuperZoo last year who had products who were like in the new or the emerging product category. Mm -hmm. And one in particular stands out because he literally, like Isabel and I went, went up and he asked us, what do you think about this? What can I improve? Blah, blah. And that was my biggest point was that it said natural flavoring. And it was a product that was supposed to help with gut health. And I'm like, how in the world is a pet parent supposed to buy this? when they already know likely that their pet has food sensitivities and then you're not even telling them what's in this product. Amen. Yeah. How did, how was that information received? It was actually well received. I don't know that anything would happen, but yeah. I mean, he received it well. <laughs> I don't know if it's a thing, but at least he, it, he heard it. So, you know, this one has got, like I said, coconut um, and, and it has rosemary. It, it looks like from the picture that it's going to have rose whole rosemary in it, but it that it's actually rosemary oil. Um, so after those first five ingredients is coconut oil, then there's gum because <laughs> we need more stuff to keep it all together. Fruit juice color. I. I mean, I guess. Well, we don't have no idea what fruit, but I guess it is better than a dye. Yeah, I guess, but I would like to know, is it beet juice, right? Yeah. 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 Um, these are green, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't I mean, know. and what's interesting is that as I look at the ingredients, there's not an ingredient that is green that would naturally color it. So I'm mm -hmm. a little confused. There's turmeric in it, and there's sunflower oil, peppermint oil, lemongrass oil, and then the rosemary oil. Mm. So, anyhow, I find that the most beneficial ingredients are at the very end, which means what? Less than 1%. <laughs> yeah, minuscule amount. Yeah. Not so, enough doing any good. No. Should I keep going? Is these OMG. Yes, go for it. So this is called Clever Marketing, a smart stick. Wouldn't you buy that for your pets? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think I would. But um, any guesses on the first ingredient? You might sense a theme here. So, so okay, I said no, but the reality is um, I did buy greenies for my dogs for a long time before I learned better. So, yes. Yeah. We've all been there. Yeah. yeah. I think that I looked at greenies because that's what was all over the TV and you see them in all the big box stores mm -hmm. and, you know, but I think the price scared me away and I was like, I have five dogs. How I'm going to go broke just trying to, you know, give them one a week or one a month, let alone one a day. Yeah. And so it was for me, it was a pass and I was just going to have to take my chances. Um, and then, you know, years later, I learned about better alternatives. So this one gets you because it says no rawhide on the front right there. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a call out. It's a positive. It's going to make you think that you're making a really beneficial, good decision for your pet mm -hmm. on the back side. It says vegetables and beef, um, flavor and then on the inside is real chicken um so first ingredient drum roll starch starch right. yep starch glycerin chicken is third where the chickens come from what they're fed what they're pumped with you yeah. would have to need to find out but i we can guess mm -hmm. the fourth ingredient y'all is sorbitol Mm. what mm. that doesn't belong there 
No. You want to tell them why? It's a sugar alcohol. Yes. And isn't it toxic? Yes. Very yeah. dangerous. Mm -hmm. Not even good for us. No. But, yeah. yeah. And then after that is some fruit toast. What's fruit toast, everybody? Yeah. Sweetener. More sugar. Yeah. More sugar. And then there's maltodextrin. More sugar. <laughs> then we have a little bit of barley. But it's not just barley. It's barley malt syrup. So oh, more great. sugar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So guys, smart stick question mark? No. That's no. Not That's no fun. hell no. And it I don't and let me find the calories on this. This yeah, this is uh 60 calories a chew. So imagine wow. I know. Imagine a lot of sugar in it. Yeah. Thank you. A mm -hmm. 15 dog and you think that you're doing your, you know, dog a favor by giving him one of these quote unquote treats. Not only is 60 calories, which, you know, my little dog, that's a, a quarter of what she would eat in a day. And then those calories, it's just basically a bunch of sugars and starches with a little bit of chicken hidden in there and a little bit of beef hidden in there. Um, but even it, what? And it's supposed to be good for their teeth. <laughs> yeah. It's supposed right? to, be, well, this one isn't necessarily like dental. Oh, that one's not dental. It, it's more of a it's, treat. It's more of a treat. It's a smart stick, meaning it's no rawhide. Okay. Gotcha. I mean, at this point, I'd almost rather my dog eat rawhide, but, um, no, I'm just, I'm being tongue in cheek. I would never give my dogs rawhide, but I did once upon a time because I didn't know better. Mm -hmm. um, but to make matters worse, this has blue dye number one, Ooh. yellow dye number six, yeah, and red dye number 40. Yeah. Yeah. Red Guys, dye linked to cancer. Yeah leave it on the shelf or, or better yet, pick it up, buy it and throw it in the damn trash. Yes. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Pepperoni. Oh, oh, no. Let me guess. There's probably no real meat in it. <laughs> Is the first ingredient red dye? <laughs> um, Y'all are going to actually be shocked on this one. The first ingredient says beef. Really? Part of the beef. What part of the cow it came from? Yeah, uh, toenails. <laughs> I don't know, but again, sourcing is huge, and the fact that um, this is oh, big heart pet brands. I don't know this company, but I do know that when my dogs, this was several years ago, and I had, I was I had cleaned up the dog's diet. It, it's not what it is today back then because it was just in the beginning of my journey but we had we were paying attention to their treats we weren't doing flea tick and heartworm chemicals the neurotoxins um we were adding fresh to their bowl every day and giving them fresh treats and so one of my very well-intentioned friends brought the dogs this for christmas and sausages and and I very gently, politely said, you know, I'm sorry we don't feed those kinds of things to them anymore. And she said, I understand. She goes, could they just maybe once, you know, try, have a, a treat every now and again? And, and you know, I felt bad because that was very sweet of her to think of the dogs at Christmas. So I gave them one. And do you know what they did? Did they throw it up? Immediately. Wow. They threw it up and I was like, see, you know, and so, um, oh my gosh, this is just, this just breaks my heart. So the next product is meat byproduct. And why don't y'all talk about, one of you talk about meat byproduct real quick. And the By significance. Yeah, byproducts are anything left over that humans would not eat, number one. And it could be sourced from dead, dying, diseased, or disabled animals, roadkill, 
euthanized pets, farm animals that have died. I mean, you just don't know what has been sent to a rendering plant. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's definitely not something that you would eat yourself. It would probably be very toxic. <laughs> that would be my first guess. You yeah. know, that's why they have to put it in those huge vats and cook it to high heat temperatures like several times. Oh. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you I know. Like what I think of, like initially I think people are like, okay, it wasn't perfect and humans can't eat it. So blah, blah, blah. But the reality is that it could be anything that Pam just said, uh, you know, yeah. De you know, uh, diseased yeah. animals d died from non who knows what could mm -hmm. have been left out in a field for weeks after a flood, whatever. But also, you know, if you have this, say this big, beautiful cow or this big, beautiful pig, and it's got a tumor on it and they just chop off that leg and then the rest of it is fine. But where does that leg go that has that big tumor on it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Byproduct. Yeah. So y'all get the drift. Um, soy grits is the next ingredient. And, you know, soy is not even bioavailable. So guys, you and I humans weren't, we're not, we don't, we don't digest. We don't do anything with soy. Um, and it's genetically modified. Mm -hmm. So soy has no business being in anybody's diet. Um, the next ingredient, the fourth ingredient is sugar. Because, you know, just straight it, up sugar. <laughs> just try, try to hide it. It's yeah. not sorbitol. It's not, you know, cane syrup. It's just straight up sugar. Um, liver is next. Steak. Steak is an interesting ingredient. What the heck? Mm -hmm. I mean, they yeah. already said beef. So I don't, that makes no sense to me. Salt. And then here it comes. <laughs> Propylene glycol. <gasps> okay. Gross. In your pet's snacks. Yeah. That's what makes it moist. Oh, yeah. Then there's a little bit of garlic powder. And for those of you that are like, oh, my gosh, garlic is toxic. No, it's not. Um, but garlic powder is going to be very, very salty. And again, that's just in there for flavoring. Mm -hmm. Um they have added color, smoke flavor. This one surprises me. Onion extract because onion is toxic. Wow. If it all amounts, yeah. And yeah. Mm -hmm. And if if propylene glycol and meat byproducts and soy and sugar weren't enough to make your mouth hit the floor, <laughs> the conservative is Anybody want to guess? CBHQ? Close. Three letters. BHA? BHA. Mm -hmm. Here's what we do with pepperoni. <laughs> Yay! Yay. And sausages. Those all go in the trash. Yeah. Just yeah. appalling. And, you know, you're you're probably, everybody's like, I mean, I did. It's like, well, why do they make it? Why do they make it? Because they can sell it and make money off of it. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That's, That's exactly good. right. Their cost of using such low-quality ingredients gives them huge profit margins. Mm -hmm. And they can easily sell this feed-grade ingredient pet product in grocery stores where pretty much everything is feed-grade anyway. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's all about the profits. And their, their excuse is we're just recycling from the human the human food industry, the, the, you know, things that people don't want to eat. Mm -hmm. But I think we can do a whole lot better than that. Yeah. Know? Cause cost of our pets health and yeah. longevity. You yeah. want to know, you know, so many pets have cancer or, or kidney disease and liver disease and diabetes. I mean, Cushing's yeah. disease, that is just crazy. Well, just yeah. look at the human food world. It's just a reflection of that. So, and you know, there's, I've heard in the store a few times, um, well, you know, there there's five ninety nine. It's cheaper, it's cheaper. Well, there's a reason things are cheaper, guys. Yeah. Um I would rather someone who, you know, doesn't have it in the budget to buy a better 
I'm not going to say more expensive, but a better, like a healthy treat to mm-hmm. cut up, or cut up some zucchini, cut up yes. pineapple. Some of your food. I've, yes. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, which brings me to kind of another sidebar when I hear um, pet parents say, you know, we don't ever feed from the table. And I, I always say, well, you should, you yeah. know, that's healthier than, you know, what, what you're getting. Yeah. Well. It's definitely healthier than these labels that I've read. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, the, you know, that's kind of the dark side, but I'm going to show you one of my favorites. And as you can see, this bag is like almost empty. This, this is um, a bag from nature's logic. It is beef lung. Mm-hmm. It's one, one ingredient. Beef lung. Any guess? Yeah. Like, Perfect. Guess yeah. Beef. Um, similar here. This is chicken heart. Mm. Yeah. That's all free. Yeah. Um, My cats all- love beef lung and chicken heart. Yeah. And they're so healthy. And, you know, like we hear are um, holistic and Chinese tra- tra- trained. I can never say that. Veterinarians talk about um, it, food energetics and how like feeds like. So mm-hmm. Char, um, one of my 12 year old Aussies, he has a little bit of a slightly like heart murmur. So I give him copious amounts of heart because yeah. like, like heart feeds heart. And then mm-hmm. brother Hank, if you know, y'all, some of y'all may be aware, but I mean, he has been living with cancer for two years, y'all. Okay. It, it, almost two years now. And they gave him two months. Um, but one of his cancers is lung cancer and I feed him lung. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's just another interesting topic, which I think we should have somebody on, um, either Dr. Besant or Dr. Morgan one day to talk about Chinese, um, traditional Chinese vet medicine and energetics of food. Mm -hmm. Um, one final one, this one again is a single source ingredient. As I mentioned in the beginning, we love our limited ingredient treats. This is from the pristine waters of Iceland and it's just cod skins. I mean, yes, yes rich in omegas, omega threes, omega six, um, high in protein. And, um, that shouldn't scare our listeners when they say it's high in protein. No. Uh, yeah. yeah, that should, don't be scared if they say, Oh, it's too much protein. No, they're carnivores y'all. Yeah. yeah. No. And it's a treat. It's not meant to be a meal. So, yeah. you know, you don't have to yeah. be too crazy. No. And then this one. So this is a new product that I was sent in the store. It's called um, Bear, B-A-R-E. And it's a freeze dried meal mixer. So literally here, here it is. Salmon, pumpkin, blueberry, bell peppers, and strawberries. Hmm. You rehydrate it. Now I would rather have fresh but if I'm in a pinch or if I'm, you know, I need mm-hmm. to buy that and take it on the road. There it is. I just rehydrate it with some filtered water. There you go. Yeah. And then the last one is a, I have a food and I want to read this. First ingredient is turkey. Um, and they sort everything here is um, they're going to have organic, which I appreciate. They use small local farms. Um, that are close to their processing plants, sardines, turkey liver, organic squash, organic kale, organic carrots, organic apples, organic parsley, and so on and so on and so on. And the nice. preserve the preservative is um, pre and probiotics or probiotics. Nice. So, yeah. Is that primal? Look- Primal and also have Dr. Besson. Oh, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. There's chicken, chicken necks, flaxseed, chicken liver, egg, chicken bone broth, broccoli, spinach, blueberries, ground krill, tomato. And she has a few vitamins that have been added to that one for balancing. Mm-hmm. But, just, you know, I wanted to bring in a few of these things just so that, you know, the audience can hear the difference between these things that are empty and harmful and things that are whole food and helpful. And that just, let me read to you the bag of treats that's on my desk and then 
Tell me, tell me if you know what it is, what it okay. is by the, you will, you absolutely will just by the first ingredient. Beef hearts, beef liver, organic carrots, organic beets, organic turmeric, and mixed tocopherols. Is that green juju? Green juju. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, when you said turmeric and then the vitamin E. Yeah. 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 Love the, our. Yeah. From the heart, I was like, you're going to know from the first ingredient. <laughs> yeah. So I have, I do, I lied. I have one more. So this okay. one, um, a donation um, that somebody dropped off, and I had to save one can because I just knew what was going to happen. So this is uh, Royal Canaan multifunctional urinary SO for cats. And of oh. course, a lot of canned food that, you know, the first ingredient is water sufficient for processing, which, mm -hmm. okay. Second product, pork byproduct, byproducts, y'all, not real pork. This mm -mm. disease, dying, what are all the other, you know, the other two Ds? Yeah. Disease, uh, hang on, what is Disabled it? and, um, oh God, I can never remember. Disabled and dead. 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 Carcasses. Okay, yes. So, yeah. Car Rodeo, yeah. Said yeah. Earlier. yeah. So port byproduct is the main ingredient in here that you're giving your cat. Um, after that is some chicken liver and some pork liver. Okay. Then it's chicken byproduct. Hmm. So we add some more byproduct in there. And we that can also be like beaks and feathers and feet and, you know, just mm -hmm. bone, skeletal. I was going to say, I wish it were feet. That'd be nice. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> Chicken feet are, are healthy, but yeah, the beak and the feathers, not just not, so not yeah. dense or sound. So there's some salmon, some chicken, then there's corn flour powdered cellulose so y'all remember earlier that sawdust some more cornstarch some pork plasma you know that kind of stuff makes it sticky y'all some gluten we've thrown in some wheat gluten in there nice which, you know, every cat and dog in person needs some wheat gluten um fish oil so let me tell you what's wrong with that because you might think oh that's excellent fish oil no why you're shaking your head pam you know why because it's been it's added to a processed heated food and so the actual heat damages the oils it does and why else is that not um something we want to see on a label that says fish oil I don't know what kind of fish it is it's that, not specific yeah like, here we have um coconut oil we have fish oil, but then it says down below that that's sardine and anchovy. Mm -hmm. um, oil. Yeah. So they should call out what it is. Then we've got some calcium additives, some salt additives, some natural flavors, um, some sodium sulfate, some more salt. And that's all to get them to eat it. Yeah. Um, but also in urinary, it's to get them to pee. Um, and I can't even say that thing this name and then there's some gum some bean gum carob bean gum taurine for the heart and that's that's added there because it's deficient in all the other meat products that were listed obviously not quality organ meat otherwise they wouldn't be having to add extra taurine right mm -hmm. and cats need taurine y'all and they don't produce it themselves mm -mm. but Taurine, like Pam says, is a natural derivative of muscle meat and organ meat. So if your food and or you're feeding, you know, treats that are organ and muscle meat, then chances are your pet's getting enough taurine, but cats can't produce it. So here's another can. I wanted to compare two cans. This is Waruva Hot Dam Lamb, which my dogs love. And it has water as the first ingredient, but then it's lamb, mackerel, pumpkin, lamb lung, lamb liver, lamb kidney. Do you hear the the organ meat, y'all? Organ and muscle. 
and then there's sunflower seed oil. They do have some gums in here to make it sticky. Um, and then they do have some added uh, minerals to make it complete and balanced. But lamb, mackerel, pumpkin, lamb lung, lamb liver, lamb kidney are the main ingredients. Much different. Very different. Is, yeah. I mean, it's not raw food, right? Mm -hmm. But if you're feeding a can, I like Waruva because it, typically it's very, you know, it's lower in fat and it's great for kidney <laughs> um, and, and other issues, pancreatitis. We get a lot of people that come in and are like, you know, I need something that's lower in fat, my vet said. Um, and we go to a lot of Waruva because of their ingredients, but also it's lower in fat. So, okay. Or that's or instead of low fat, you could actually just feed real food. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, just that yeah. green juice bag. That's, you know, when you talk about raw food, guys, the majority of them on the market, complete and balanced. I mean, that's what it is. It's organ meat, it's kidney, I mean, organ meat, muscle meat, um, and produce. Mm -hmm. And very few of them have to add vitamins and minerals to balance it out. Just whole good food. Mm -hmm. Ingredients matter. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Do y'all have any to read? Uh, yeah, I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who wants to go first? Do you, you want to go first, Jessica? Sure. I just I, I just thought it would be fun to pull up. Um, so I have two foods pulled up. And they are the same manufacturer. One of them is just a regular old adult food. And the other one is a prescription diet. And I am wondering if y'all can tell the difference. Okay. okay. Let's go. Okay. So I'm just going to read like the first, I don't know, like seven or eight ingredients. Because, you know, once we get past salt, it's all... Yeah. It's all um, downhill. It's all downhill. <laughs> okay. So the first one is whole grain corn, mm. chicken, whole grain wheat. Science diet. <laughs> <laughs> chicken fat, brewer's rice, chicken mm. meal. That's the third chicken, by the way. Black seed, chicken liver flavor, blah, blah, blah. So that's the first one. It started with corn and then chicken and then wheat and then chicken. <laughs> right. The next one is chicken, cracked pearled barley, whole grain wheat, whole grain corn, whole grain sorghum, corn right. gluten meal, Ugh. soybean meal, chicken fat, brewer's rice, yada, yada, yada. That's which awful. one? Which one is the regular and which one is the prescription? The uh, first, the regular. The second one is the prescription. That's what I was thinking. Or is the first one prescription? The one that has chicken first is actually the regular one. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the first one was the prescription food. The one that starts with corn mm -hmm. <laughs> is the prescription food. And yeah. it is supposed to be <laughs> for... Jeez. Brain care. What? <laughs> All the carbohydrates? <laughs> what was okay. the what was the condition? It's for brain care. Brain? For an aging brain. There's not even okay, where's the protein? Where's the fat to give the brain energy? There's nothing in there but carbohydrates that turn to sugar that upset the gut that and there is the connection uh, the in the brain. Yeah. <laughs> what? At least in humans, they call diabetes type three. Yes. Dementia. Yeah. yeah. Sugar. It's a sugar issue. It is. So let's keep feeding it. I know I was, I was, um, and the reason that I, I wanted to see the difference and cause you would think the prescription food would be better. Right. But mm -hmm. time and time again, it's, it, it's worse. It, it is. Worse. And, and there's, I'm sorry, let's call a spade a spade. And we all know about the lawsuit right now that there is nothing prescription about quote unquote, yeah. air quote, prescription yeah. food. It right. is one 
hundred percent a marketing marketing scheme. Yes. Yes. Just defraud pet parents, scare them. If your pet doesn't have this prescription food, yes, money. And you know, by the way, corn gluten meal, that's what I put on my yard as fertilizer because wow. it kills the the weeds and it feeds the grass. And I buy it in 40 pound bags at the landscaping store for $35. And I throw it in my yard, y'all. It does not belong in food, like pet mm-hmm. food, people food, anything. No. And all that gluten and all that soy, there is no nothing nutritionally value valuable in, in any of that. It's just complete filler. And it's just going to destroy the dog mm-hmm. or the gut. Yeah. And it's so many more problems down the road. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. Well, and, and the reason that I wanted to bring that up is, is because, so I was just, I was talking to a client today. Her dog has had chronic bladder stones, Mm -hmm. had a urethostomy. Oh no. And is on a prescription bladder care food kibble. And I'm like, my, my first question, of course, what she fortunately hired me. Cause she's like, I don't, I want to feed real food. Tell me how to feed real food, blah, 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 okay. which is wonderful. But I'm like, okay, are you checking their urine pH? Yeah. You know? Like that is the m- most basic thing. And our veterinarians aren't even like, that is so easy to do at it's home. So easy to do. Yeah. And, and then the kibble on top of it. So the type of stones that the stock has it's because the learn the urine pH is too low. Mm-hmm. And then we're throwing kibble on top of that to keep the urine pH low. Why, why, how, in what r- world <laughs> is this going to work? Yeah, and it what- won't. I have a question because I know in feline diets, when, they're, when their urine pH gets really alkaline, mm-hmm. that's when they see all the crystals and things like that. Is it the yeah. opposite for dogs? Well, there are different types of stones so yeah. the like there's oxalate and oxalate and right yeah so the oxalate is when the urine ph is too low and the struvites are when it's too high okay yep so yeah to balance it all out because i know that's what when i went through the urethostomy with riley uh my cat riley i was checking his urine ph multiple times a day like just trying to balance things out and figure out what was going to work. What, you know, I'm trying this cranberry supplement. Is that working? I'm trying this food. Is that working? And it's like the easiest thing we can do just to check the urine pH. Mm-hmm. But so they're not, that's a good point. we just aren't aware. And that's, you know, I'm so glad you brought that up because it's an issue of awareness and, you know, buying those test strips is really mm-hmm. simple, not expensive. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, they even have that cat litter and I'm not an expert in that. You guys, you know, y'all, y'all may be able to speak to that, but you know, my question, if I had a cat, you know, our cat passed away several years ago, but if I had a cat, that would be interesting to me because I want to stay on top and be proactive. Um, So, okay. A litter that changes color based on the pH of my, you know, cat's urine is, intriguing to me but I want to know the technology and the science behind what their little feet what they're stepping on because when I had when we had Georgie we used just the the crushed walnut shells or we Mm -hmm. used um the pine crushed pine pellets Mm -hmm. um so you know we just we were even sensitive to the fact that you know their paws which are little sponges um are touching whatever is in that product yeah so do you know much about those urine you know I am not a fan of silica products okay is that what it is yeah because they will get it on their paws and guess what they do oh yeah lit. and then they ingest all of that stuff and it doesn't it doesn't it's not good for them you know yeah, yeah I didn't think about that not a fan, not a fan. So pH strips are just easy to do. Mm-hmm. That's, and that I will was- say when I was going through this with Riley, I was going back and forth between 
um, that walnut litter you were talking about and a coconut litter. And they were both brown. Mm -hmm. And I liked both of them a lot. And my cats would use them. But what I found out was that I couldn't see when he had blood in his urine because the litter was brown. Mm -hmm. So I have never used a brown litter since. And okay. I have tried just about every litter there is. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you to use the toilet. <laughs> 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 true that's so true yeah oh my goodness okay are you guys ready for this list okay yeah. okay let me start with let me start <laughs> with one okay I know that you guys know this brand I'm just gonna say it because you said yours Janet mm -hmm. um, I was right one, <laughs> one of the most Popular cat treats on the market. What brand is that? God, please don't say Temptations. Temptations. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Uh, oh, my. <laughs> Did you know they <laughs> make a dry cat food now? No. Oh, Lord. No. Oh, yes. I just found out today when I was looking this up. I'm like, oh, wow. Oh, you did not. You did not just make a, a, a dry cat food. Yes, they did. Um. So I pulled up one of these flavors. It's called Block Party Barbecue Flavor Dry Cat Food. OMG. That sounds like a friskies name. <laughs> it does. It does. <laughs> Probably the same company. Um, okay. So the first, this is the dry cat food. Keep in mind. Um, the first ingredient is chicken byproduct meal. Yuck. And then wheat. Yuck. And then ground whole grain corn. Ugh. Soybean meal. <sighs> double yuck. Rivers rice, animal <laughs> fat, meat and bone meal. There's your more rendered products. Animal fat? It doesn't even it's call out animal. of, yeah. oh, yeah. not. It's not designated, just animal fat. That could be any. Well, because there was no meat in it. I mean, the, the ingredients you just read were just grain, 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 grain. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And by product, by product, by product. Yeah. Inflammatory, <laughs> and then, inflammatory. Yeah. And then it has natural flavor, which is just a chemical food additive. Um, and then corn gluten meal and then or wheat, wheat flour. Oh um, potassium chloride salt but it gets better because after the salt marker even though these are very small quantities along this list they have um dried peas dried cheese they have filet mignon flavor which <laughs> is just a chemical additive that's supposed to taste like filet mignon because there is no such thing as filet mignon flavor so it's chemical. And then further down, it has yellow number six, yellow number five, blue, blue number two, and red number 40. Oh, my. No. I throw wow. up. I feel so bad for these cats. Um, this this could be like Miamex or, you know, Friskies or something. I don't see any difference in that. There, that is... That is obscene right right i just uh, I, words i don't know how this is legal um i mean you shouldn't have to be certified in nutrition or be a nutritionist in order to be able to feed your pets a healthy food and just the governing bodies which i say you know that's laughable mm -hmm. are really um do the not just the pet population, but the human population, a disservice. Absolutely. It's a crime. It is totally. So I wanted to compare that, their food to their treats. Mm. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> the so premix pre is all that's different. <laughs> probably so. um, now this is a, this is the mix ups catnip fever flavor. Oh, you yeah. Okay, so the first ingredient is chicken byproduct meal, and then ground corn, and then animal fat. 
brewer's rice, wheat flour, dried meat byproducts, natural flavor, brewer's dried yeast, and then they have some um, potassium chloride, chloride salt. Okay, and then we get yellow number five, blue number two. We have a few um, other, you know, amino acids and um, stuff. Oh, and then catnip powder. This is less than 1%, guys. Catnip powder is less than 1%. It also has red number 40, dried cheddar cheese. Um, and yeah, everything else is like a pre-mix, a vitamin mix or whatever. But that is not much different than their cat food. No. Okay. Okay. And then I thought about this. We're supposed, these are supposed to be treats. Mm -hmm. Why are, if they're supposed to be treats, why do we need a full vitamin pack? We're not trying to make this a meal, right? Yeah. I was just wondering that myself. We don't, yeah. why make it with all of these things? If it's supposed to be just a treat that you feed one or two a day, this, you know what I mean? What a waste yeah. of time and money. I mean, that's not even necessary for a treat, right? Does it say anywhere on the front of the package that it's complete and balanced? Um, <clears throat> well, I can't read the package. It's yeah. so tiny, so tiny, tiny. Um, I'm looking at just like product descriptions and I don't see anything that describes it as complete and balanced. Temptations, treats. What yeah. was one in particular? Because on my end, you were cutting out. This is the mix up catnip fever. And mix I called it because so many people like to use the catnip one. But guys, there's less than 1% catnip in this. Yeah. And yeah. it's not USDA organic. No. And then the fact that what turns it green is the red dye and the yellow dye. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh no, yeah. no. It's it's the it's probably a combination well, of the yellow, blue, and the yellow and blue, right? That makes green, right? Yellow, yellow and blue. Yeah. 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 So they're adding food dye to make it green. It's not from <laughs> no. no. Um it does then, not say anything about being complete and balanced. I'm looking at it. No, because that's the treat, but I'll bet you the the block party barbecue might have that because um if they're gonna label it as a food you know yeah um let me look so i mean there are foods on the market that are not complete and balanced they just that have is, to say it that, yeah they just have to yeah we have a sticker on one of ours because it's in with a bunch of others that are complete and balanced and we mm. just felt compelled to put a an overt sticker on the bag that says this is not complete and balanced and to just to be used as a topper. Um, yeah. I think that's important. It is. People don't know. They don't look, they don't read. And they don't know what it means. Even if they saw it on there, they wouldn't mm -hmm. understand what that means necessarily. Okay. I do have one more package. Um, and this is the feline greenies dental treats. Oh God. So many people think that greenies, he actually helps their cat's teeth. I kind of similar to what we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. This is savory salmon flavor. Would you guys like to guess what the first ingredient is? Not <laughs> salmon. Starch. Starch. <laughs> no, it's chicken. <laughs> it's no. chicken meal. It's chicken oh, meal. Meal. Okay. <laughs> and then, and then ground wheat, brewer's rice, corn mm -hmm. gluten meal, poultry fat. Oat fiber, natural flavor, and then salmon meal. Mm. Eight ingredients down, and they have the nerve to call this salmon flavor. <laughs> oh, it's red the salmon meal first, and then just nothing else. But yeah, and, and then it what... has more flaxseed, and it has brewer's dried yeast, and then it has a bunch of minerals and all this, and it has um, some fruit juice color. Like, like you said, like, what, <laughs> what, yeah. that? what fruit? <laughs> um, they do have turmeric color. Um, you know, so everything else was like the vitamin mix. But again, I ask, why do you need a whole vitamin mix pack on this? If you're just making a treat, 
Yeah, that's so strange. That, but I think you should write them and ask that question. I I want to know, don't you? Well, it's funny because when I'm on the Temptations Treats site, that's where I am. Now. They have a little they they have a little chat bot over here. It says, "Click the chat if you'd like to talk with an advisor." And I almost here. I'm gonna do today, it. I almost I almost did. I almost was, I, and I might tomorrow. Ask yeah. them. Did you know that all your food colors in this product contribute to cancer? <laughs> Ooh, and yeah. why do you need a vitamin pack if this is supposed to be a treat? Okay, I have the Temptations virtual companion pulled up. Gotta oh, love fun. <laughs> Y'all know how much I love AI. See, if I type in human, let's see if I get a representative. So annoying. Okay. We're sorry. Oh, they're not here for human. Is there anything else I can help with? <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, yeah, they're probably left for the day. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, but I long. think that's something we have to start thinking about. Like, why do we need a vitamin pack? Why do we need added minerals and vitamins and things like that into these treats? If they're meant to be treats, not fed as a, it's not a meal. It's not food. You're going to only feed one or two or three of these, you know, if you're, if you're okay. not, <laughs> you're feeding this stuff, like, please don't feed this. But that's the intention is to just do a, you know, one or two. Why not just put, the meat ingredient and like limited as limited as you can. Yeah, I agree. I it mean, is. I, it's, it's pointless. Yeah. It's a it treat, is. you know, they don't have an answer for me. They don't understand my question. Oh, of course not. <laughs> Contact support. I'm contacting support. Um, I want to know, but you know, I find it equally not perplexing it disturbs me because again and unless you've been trained i mean and why do you have to be trained in order to select something that's healthy for yourself or your pet and right. on here they call out you know they're they're marketing again this temptations mix ups catnip fever includes their favorite flavors Chicken flavor, catnip flavor, and cheddar cheese flavor. But there is no chicken. There is no quality or USDA organic catnip or cheddar cheese in it. No. And they say no artificial flavors for an amazing taste your cat will love. It's I'm sorry. chemical, though. It's still. It's still chemicals. It's still it's chemical. Yeah, chicken flavor, catnip flavor, cheddar cheese flavor, yet there are no artificial flavors for an amazing taste that your cat will love. But taste doesn't mean nutrition. That's no. what I want there. Mm -hmm. um, that crunchy outer shell that they say helps to control tartar and support dental health is a bold-faced lie. Because all that starch, those carbohydrates, the ingredients that you read, that all that's going to do is put tartar on the teeth. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um yeah. And it does, oh, it does say 100% nutritionally complete and balanced, healthy cat treat for adult cat maintenance. It is says that, that for people who want to feed these as a meal, I guess so. I guess so, but it's not a healthy meal. It may be oh. balanced. That doesn't mean that it's got healthy whole meats that our cats need. Is there taurine? Yeah. Pam, since it says that it's, you know, complete and balanced, is there taurine in there? Because there certainly isn't any muscle meat or organ meat. Yes, there is taurine right after blue number two. <laughs> and it's after salt. So it's less than 1%. I don't know how that would even, how that can be. It's salt, yellow, yellow number five, blue number two, and then taurine. Um, yeah. And then down after yeah. the Offerals, you have red number 40 and dried cheddar cheese. So it's even further down the list. Yep. Um, wow. You know, it just, it blows my mind. I, I've, I haven't looked at this product in years because, you know, we know better, yep. but it's, it's really sad that they make products like this. Yeah, it mm -hmm. is. It is. And it's disturbing. Yeah. And it just goes back to this whole, you know, episode about, you know, guys, you've got to get past the 
front page, so to speak. You know, you can't judge a book by its cover. Um, it's look that's past true. the marketing terms, all, yep. the, all the fancy words that pull you in. Yeah. Stop and go, wait, why is that pulling me in? Read the ingredients and ask yourself if you were picking something up off the shelf and you turned the box around or the bag around and it said corn, <clears throat> soy, wheat. wheat, wheat gluten, corn gluten, corn gluten meal, byproduct, byproduct meal, those should be red flags. And anything with a dye, I'm pretty sure Lucky Charms aren't really pink, yellow, blue, purple, <laughs> green. Um, but, you know, we ate them when we were little, but um, hopefully, they're like so we all, huh? they're, they're so, so good. good. <laughs> um, well, they, here's uh, something else that people probably don't realize, and it's not going to be on this label. When you see things like soy and corn and wheat, I can almost guarantee you 99.9% .9 of the time that it's going to be laced with glyphosate mm -hmm. because those crops are the highest sprayed crops with glyphosate and genetically modified by the way as well. Yes. You're putting in a very toxic chemical that contributes to lymphoma and tumors. It's, it's a fact. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would not touch that with a 10 foot pole. <laughs> In fact, I would wash my hands because you don't know what that residue is. You don't want it getting into your body. Yeah. So, you know, I just, when you know better, you can do better. I would definitely not recommend these, these products. You yeah. know, so we've, we've really raised a lot of um, red flags, if you will. Um, and we've also included you know, ingredients that are good and that we want to seek out for our pets as well as ourselves. And people may be worried about cost. I mean, that, that is a reality. Um, and to that point, I would say, you know, wherever you are, I mean, maybe you're in, um, you know, you don't have a pet store close by and you have to rely on ordering online. You can still read the ingredients mm -hmm. and avoid the things that we've said and yes there are products out there I mean let's say that you know your budget and your lifestyle only allows you to feed a dry kibble and that's reality read the ingredients mm -hmm. there are um good kibbles out there that don't have all of these genetically modified high carbohydrate you know sugary um ingredients in them and they, they may cost a few dollars more, but it's worth it. It's, you know, less trips to the vet clinic is what we would hope, less disease. Yeah. And also add those fresh fruits and vegetables, you know, goat milk at the it, farmer's. Yeah. Real yes. And give, give the table scraps, you know, give yeah. your leftover vegetables from your plate or that last bite of, of cooked Shake. chicken. Or chicken, you know, or like you said, your eggs, your your veggies, whatever it might be, um, add that to their bowl. Give them those as treats. You know, chop up some some fruit, some berries, or something, and just offer those. Broccoli, you know, we do broccoli. We do the most common in our household. And remember, I feed raw and gently cooked raw. Um, and when I'm in a hurry, I will do canned, but we add um, broccoli all the time. We do wild blueberries with um, raspberries often, but mostly mm -hmm. blueberries, um, ripe bananas. If you are a, um, I just drew a blank. If you're an inside scooper with Dr. Karen Becker and Rodney Habib, they just recently covered the benefits of feeding your pets raw, I mean, ripe bananas. So the greener, the better. And by better, I mean, the more beneficial they are for even anti-cancer is what the research is showing. And same with broccoli. But the key with broccoli, they say, um, and Dr. Becker and Rodney is to chop it up, um, even like in a food processor and put it in the refrigerator for 90 minutes and then start serving it. You know, three servings a week, they say, 
um, have anti-cancer benefits. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can serve it raw or you could lightly steam it. But the key is to put it in a food processor or a blender um, so that those pieces are two millimeters and then put it in the refrigerator to let it sit for 90 minutes. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that's not going to break the bank. No. And if I could add one thing to that, that could make such a huge difference, regardless of the kibble that you're feeding, if you're feeding kibble, is to hydrate it. Add oh, filtered water to it. Thank you. Because yes. Because it takes so much water to digest that dry food and your dog can't drink enough water right to be able to digest the food and so it's going to pull moisture from all of the organs from the skin from everywhere in your dog's body they're going to live in a chronic state of dehydration so i mean and that's just that's like the cheapest simplest thing you could ever do and will make a huge difference yeah yeah for cats too. Yes. So glad that you mentioned that. So, I mean, if you, if everybody's listening until now, I mean, those are just nuggets that are worth their weight in gold. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I don't know if, if the ingredient talk can ever be done, um, finished over with, because there's just so much to say. And then by the time we're done, we forget it all, <laughs> especially when we think about, um, you know, what the actual definition of some of these words are. Like we didn't even touch on the fact that the AFCO definition for chicken isn't what we think of when we buy chicken at the grocery store. Like these are, there is so much going on and it is very intentionally designed so that consumers have no idea what's going on. Right. Um, so the the conversation can continue, uh, but I think today's conversation is <laughs> hitting an end. <laughs> In it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so do y'all have any closing arguments? Let's go with that. <laughs> feed fresh, feed real. And if you can't, then let's add fresh and real to the bowl, add the hydration, um, and then treats do matter. Yeah. The, not just the, the caloric density of these treats that are filled with carbohydrates and sugars, but, um, they add up in calories, but they add up in quality. So, you know, go for the single source ingredient. Mm Mm-hmm. Now, one of these chicken hearts, I can cut it up into four pieces and give, you know, one little you know sliver to four dogs at a time. I don't. I give them a whole heart and I give them a ton. <laughs> but, you know, let's say that, OK, you you go to your pet store and you're like, man, I just I'd rather put the my budget toward better quality food. Well, then go to the farmer's market, go to the butcher, go to your grocery store and look for chicken feet, look for chicken hearts, look for beef liver, look for beef kidney and just bake it low and slow Mm. and slightly undercook mine. Yeah. And then, yeah, Mm -hmm. don't overcook and then give it to them. But, you know, this is more convenient. So. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, it's, it's one, it's always one or the other. You're either going to have to pay in time or you're going to have to pay in money. So yeah. you just have to make that decision on what's going to work better for you. You can't avoid one or the other, like one, you have to give up one. Bingo. Mm-hmm. Um. So you just have to make that decision for you. Is it going to be time or is it going to be money? There you go. Yeah. And when you have the long-term goal in he- ahead of you in mind, I want my pet to live as long and as healthy as possible. We have to start taking these steps now. Because, you know, in in many cases, your pet could develop a chronic disease, you know, midlife toward end of life. And then you're instead of having golden years where they're healthy, 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 healthy and gone, you know, like healthy decline, 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 decline and gone. You know, that's not golden years for our pets. Mm -hmm. That's what we really want for them. So we want them around as long as they can be here. 
So yeah. we just have to be mindful of decisions that we make, especially when it comes to food, because that is something that impacts them at the cellular level every single day. Yes, 100%. So that's nope. my final thought. <laughs> no nope, better. better. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in, for listening. Um, we hope you learned a lot and that you share this with anyone you know that has pets. Um, because regardless of what they may be feeding, hopefully they can gain some nuggets of information to help them um, better understand what they're looking at before they buy it. That's, that's the goal here. So with that, I'm going to say bye and we'll see you. We'll talk to you next time. <laughs> bye guys. Yeah. Bye. Bye.